Why should I even go to church? I mean, listen, this question is valid because many of our experiences with the church have been more like a dumpster fire than a source of life. So if you've been struggling with this question or you know somebody who's struggling with this question, listen, you're among 40 million Americans who over the last 25 years have vacated the church. So give me one good reason, right? Why shouldn't you join that group of 40 million Americans? Well, you probably don't want to hear it, but let me hit you with the truth. The church is not about you. Who, me? But it includes you. And without you, there is something missing. So don't buy into it. Don't buy into the all I need is Jesus and me type of faith. Because Jesus' vision of the church was vibrant, messy, and diverse. His vision was Jesus and we, not simply Jesus and me. So before you make your way out of the church door, stick around and I will show you how the one that calls all of us includes all of us. Today on Church Door. In the Rock Nelly community of Toronto, Canada, potholes are a regular occurrence. Now, while this might just seem like a minor inconvenience, there was one recent summer when an in particular pothole went unaddressed for quite some time. Get your lunch, some water, and a 40 pound bag of asphalt. Okay, boss, what are we doing? We're fixing a pothole. What seemed to be an eyesore and road hazard had been there long enough that it began to grow some weeds. So in a mixture of frustration and intrigue, resident Brian Link went to investigate and what he found shocked him. No this was not a weed. It was a tomato plant. So in a moment, what was once a source of anger and confusion became a source of community connection. Because over the next few weeks, the word spread about the tomatoes and turn that community eyesore into a community focal point. Many neighbors went to tend the plant regularly together. Brian Link went on to say to the local news, I'm hopeful that getting attention doesn't get this pothole fixed too soon. So here's the thing, brother and sisters. This true story serves as a metaphor for the church. There are countless churches sitting in every community that people pass by thinking it's just irrelevant, an eyesore, or maybe even harmful. But it's not until people begin to investigate what looks like an overgrown weed that they will see in the middle of all the brokenness that is the church, that there is life. As we all discover that life, each individually, we realize that it is a life that brings us together. You see, this is Jesus' vision for the church. Broken people gathered together around one thing, the source of life, himself. Matter of fact, this Sunday, Palm Sunday, we celebrate and gather around Jesus, the life giver. That's why I'm calling today's message, the one that calls all of us, includes all of us. In this beautiful story on Palm Sunday, Jesus is being hailed as the King of Israel for the very first time. He sends his disciples to go get a donkey on which he'll ride into the city in royalty. Well, in the first century, it really wasn't common for a king to ride in on a donkey. It would usually be a horse, a war horse to be exact, it, as if to say, I've come to conquer and rule and you either get in line or get out of the way. But Jesus chose the donkey, a lowly, humble animal that represented peace. And this choice also fulfilled a long awaited Old Testament prophecy. Now in Matthew's account of this story, there is one curious detail that no other version notes. It is that Jesus didn't just ask for one donkey, he asked for two. Now, why was this detail so important to Matthew? Stick with me here for just a second. I'll reveal it to you 
in just a moment. But first, let's think about this practically. The prophecy from Zechariah said that he would be mounted on a colt, which was the young donkey. And how would a young donkey be able to do this well? Well, having his mom beside him would only serve to calm the donkey in the spotlight of this eternal moment. And here's what happened. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks. And he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road and the others branches from the trees spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, who is this? And the crowd said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. In this moment, every detail serves to show how Jesus's authority was different than any other authority that had ever existed. He comes on a lowly colt, and as he did that, people laid their cloaks down with palm branches on the road, which was a symbol of peace. They came in peace. And as you can imagine, these people really, really had to like Jesus to lay down their cloak to be trampled by a donkey. You know what donkeys do. I know, right? It's kind of gross. But Jesus had made such an impression that these people were willing to lay down their precious belongings to honor him, even if it meant it would get messy. Then it says that the crowds chanted Hosanna, which meant what? It meant save us. Yes, us, not just save me. The Lord didn't favor any individual, but he came for who? Us, all of us collectively. Jesus was ultimately demonstrating that salvation is for all. No other message has impacted the world so greatly. And this was the moment of history that marked that proclamation in such a vivid and bright way. Jesus coming as King shows us that there is salvation for all, that he is the light in the darkness that draws all of us together. He's the tomato plant in the pothole. Now, back to the donkey, the two donkeys, right? Why was this? Again, first, it was to fulfill prophecy and also the mom donkey would have kept the cult calm. But some scholars have pointed this out, that the mother donkey might have also represented the old covenant, God's covenant with Israel, and the young cult represented the new covenant, God's covenant that he makes with the world through Jesus. In this moment, these donkeys represent the way that Jesus was building his peaceful kingdom. He wasn't coming to throw out the things of God, but to fulfill them so that we could all have access to God. So many people might feel that the church is just old, out of date, and a source of pain and heartache. Yet the reality is that on that Palm Sunday over 2,000 years ago, Jesus made it clear his church is a church that calls all people together, the Jew, the Gentile, the young, the old, men and women, all of us together. Come together. We are all called to his kingdom with all of our baggage and our backgrounds to be his hands and feet to a lost and dying world. Ultimately, the one that calls all of us includes all of us. If you feel that you're on the outside and that God is calling you in, the king of peace, has come to give you peace. We have a team of people here that want to help you find that peace. You can reach out to us down in the chat or you can text prayer to the number that you see coming up on the screen right now. Hey, help us promote great Christian content by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification bell so that every single time we put out a piece of content, it's gonna come directly to you. Or you can go the extra mile by going to rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and making a donation there because every single donation goes right back to helping people just like you take their next step with Jesus. We pray blessings upon you this Palm Sunday that you may know the King of Peace who has come to bring peace for us all. Hey, if you're struggling with what it means to be part of the church, I did a video not too long ago on that. I think this one might help you. So go ahead and hit that button in the center of the screen.